Hello everyone, welcome to Basically Neda. I'm Neda, and this is my top 10 books of 2023. I'm going to talk about the top 10 books out of the 43 books that I've read so far. I have a few books that I'm currently reading, but I won't be talking about those because I'm not sure if those are good or not. And I'm not including the books that I reread this year. And the way that my ranking goes is that number 10 would be the lowest, number 1 will be the highest in my favorites, like number um, 1 would be my favorite favorite, number 10 would be my lowest favorite. And out of all of the 10 books, 9 of them were 4 stars for me and 1 was 5 star um, rated. I can't, I don't know how this happened, it just happened. There was a lot of 4 stars and 3 stars this year for me and there was only one book that hooked me. So let's get into it. <laughs> Number 10 in my list is um, Hinch by Natalie Zena Walschitz. This is a book about superheroes and their assistants. This book is about a female eight, um, temp, Hinch, who, who is an uh, assistant of one of the heroes and uh, something happens to her and she is against one of the heroes now. So we go from there. The story is plot driven and it's very fast paced. It is very humorous and there's office politics in it which is very refreshing considering that like most superheroes are just about the superhero and this is about the little person in their lives and yeah it was it was fun to read and I enjoyed it number nine on my list is station 11 by Emily st. John Mandel this is a story about um, a pandemic breaking through and uh, how civilization reacts towards it. The, the book is um, going back and forth between when the, the pandemic broke and 20 years later, how uh, the characters in this book are coping with the aftermath of it. They're about, I think, well, let's just say there, there are multiple POVs in this book and we get to learn about what how the society has um, ended through those characters. It was um, interesting. It It's not for the lighthearted, I would say, if you... Um, yeah, it's, it, it is about a pandemic, so take it with that. <laughs> And yeah, it was it, it was okay. It was it was pretty good. I would say if you it's more of a literal literary um, fiction than a fantasy. So go into it knowing that it's more literary. It was really good. Number eight in my list is a trilogy. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the whole trilogy because that would take a long time, but I would say you should try out the trilo this trilogy, at least the first book, and I will explain the first book to you guys. Um, the first book is Scythe, and the trilogy tri tri trilogy is The Ark of Scythe by Neil, Neil Schusterman. And this is a YA. Um, story but it reads adult as well so it's on the borderline in, in my opinion but take it as you will <laughs> just because there's a lot of like 
teens that are more mature. I would say like people in their 20s and 30s will enjoy it as well. Um, because like there's death and there's um, obviously there's sights. <laughs> so there's about, it's, it's about people going through journey of life and learning how to cope with the situation that life brings to them so it is a lot of um hard topics i would say so this the story is about two uh, teenagers who are in their senior year they get picked up um as apprentices by um a scythe to um learn from him and become scythe themselves and um we see that um the story through those two characters there is a female and a male character and the reason why they need the scythe is that the society has learned how to um live longer and people are living into their hundreds and five hundreds and so they need um the site to uh, balance out the population basically it's very fast-paced it is action-packed it is very fun to read yet emotional as well number seven on my list is legends and lattes by travis Ber uh, baldry this is the story of an orc who decides to stop having the life of uh, a warrior and gives up the battlefield to go and start her own business as a um, cof coffee shop owner. And we learn about her journey through all of this <laughs> and how she actually makes it and what um, obstacles that she has to go through. It is very, it's a cozy fantasy um, f found family story. You don't see a lot of the magic, but yet there is a lot of um, magical creatures in it. So it's, it's a light magical system, I guess. Um, it was fun to read. It's not one of the ones that I would say if you like high fantasy go pick this up it's like it was a light read I would say and it was fun <laughs> now my list wouldn't be complete if I didn't have this author in it so my number six is um N.K. Jemison's um The City We Became so <laughs> I read both of them, the the duology. I have read both of them, but I do think the first one is the best one out of the two. And I think the pandemic did her injustice. <laughs> but yeah, so the the first book is about New York and um basically the cities have avatars who are able to help help them and protect them from evil and uh, New York City has five boroughs and five avatars for those boroughs and in this story we get to meet the five people who represent those boroughs and are the avatars and the story goes from there <laughs> and yeah, it is. It it's a love story to New York, and it's very much like reading a video game. If you like that kind of stuff, pick it up. <laughs> it was fun to read. <laughs> I keep saying it's fun to read, but you know, that's just me. I uh, I should figure out something else <laughs> to say about it. It was interesting. It was a video game. <laughs> My number five, 
now we're at the top five. My number five book of uh, this year is a very humorous one, which is short, humorous, and short. It is Tegan Fisher's A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. There's a 14-year-old girl who can, well, bake with her magic. Her magic is that she can bake really good stuff with her, you know. She has a, ma a magic ability to bake. And she is working at her aunt's bakery where one day she wakes up to go and start the day and she finds a dead body in on the bakery's floor on the yeah on the bakery's floor and everyone thinks that she is the one who's done it but you know she hasn't done anything <laughs> and it's really fun it was um as i said humorous there is a sourdough starter that is very interesting and it was very it got me out of a reading song that's what i will say it was it was really fast and really really easy to read and it didn't take that long for me to read it i read it in one day i think so my number four book and um this year is actually another series it is brandon sanderson's um store li store light archives <laughs> and specifically the way of kings i'm not true reading all of them i've only read the first two so i'm only going to talk about the first one and which is the way of kings um this is basically the introduction to the whole story. Um, we get to learn about the main characters and their journey towards what the story is going, where, where the story is going. And there are a lot of side characters in this, but I think it's worth it because it is um, helping the characters do what they need to do and yeah just don't read this at, at in your bed <laughs> i got violently attacked by my books <laughs> specifically the first one <laughs> every time that i would read it it would just fall on top of my face so yeah i decided that i wasn't going to read it anymore in my my bed i've been yeah these books are not good for bedtime reading <laughs> and not because of the story but because they are so thick that they will fall on top of your face <laughs> yeah anyways this is a journey story and it's epic and it is uh sanderson's magnum opus so take it and hope you like it <laughs> My number three book of this year, well, this is another series, <laughs> The Green Bone Saga by um, Fonda Lee. I'm going to specifically talk about Jade City. And <laughs> yeah, it, it it's a bit of a gangster story and jade is magical but only a certain people can use that magic and then uh, there are two families who are the heads of this city and uh, they are in conflict with each other and the story goes from there <laughs> there's it's very dramatic it is very fast-paced Things happen really fast throughout the books. All three books go like really fast. Multiple events happen. And yeah, it's very emotional. It was like an emotional roller coaster reading all three of them. So if you want to go through that, 
go ahead <laughs> and pick it up. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. Fun yet not that fun because it was an emotional ro roller coaster. <laughs> Now we get to my number two. My number two book of this year is uh, P.D. Jelly Clark's A Master of Gin. Only because it had pacing issues, it is the second top. It is about a female detective in Cairo in 1912. And uh, there's a cult, and she has to investigate how this happened, the, the event that happened. She has to investigate, there's murders and those kind of things. And there are magical uh, beings, there's also jinns, as you can say. <laughs> Obviously, it's about the master of jinn, so. It was very interesting, very fun, but there was a lot of, like, right about three quarters way in, there was a bit of a um, pacing issue. It was, it kind of slowed down, like the story kind of slowed down, and that was my issue with it, or else it would be a five. That's why it was four. So it's my number two. <laughs> And what else can I say about this? Oh yeah, and the uh, cultural representative in this book is very well done. Like everything about the different foods and the different um, ethnicities and those kind of things that were in Cairo during 1910s is very well presented. And I would say, go into it knowing that you're going to get into that little runt in the middle. Like, not in the middle, almost at the end. But it is worthwhile to read. And now, my top book of this year. Number one, the one that I can't stop talking about, is... The Judas Blossom by Stephen Aryan. I f first came to notice about this book when I was watching Alan review it. Alan from um, Library of Alexandria on YouTube. And he was very enthusiastic about this. And the more he talked about it, the more I wanted to read it. This was right before the book came out. So when the book came out, I went and got it. I figured, you know, if I don't like it, it's still a pretty book. <laughs> so it happened that I really liked it. I picked it up and the first chapter just hooked me. I could not put it down, but I had to because I had to go to work and I had to do other things. So yes, this is my number one and I will tell everybody about it. So the premise of this book is in 13th century Persia, where the Mongols have taken over and the Persian rebels are trying to take back their country. This has uh, five POVs and all five are very interesting. Um, there are some characters that are historical figures, but this story is not actually um, what happened to them. It's more fictional than history, yet you are learning a bit about history while you're, you're reading it. Um, you learn a bit about the culture. You learn a bit about, like, you don't need to know anything about the history or anything because all of the things that are needed for this story is told in this story. But, I mean, I guess you will learn a bit about the history as well if you read it. And it was fun. It was, like, I couldn't put it down. This, 
the characters are so interesting. There's so many things that are in there that I keep wanting to know what happens. And the ending, oh, that ending was just like watching a movie or like being in a video game at the end. And it was so good. And yeah, I want to, I, I want to know what happens. <laughs> I want the next book. <laughs> So, you know, that that's one of the books that I'm probably going to pick up next year. So, <laughs> when it comes out in the summer again. So, I might be picking that up. And, yeah. Oh, the magic system is halfway mid in the middle. <laughs> like, you, you see more of the magic system in ha of the halfway point. And um, I think we're going to get more of it from the next book and the book after that this one I think it was just um to uh set the scene kind of thing so we know what is happening with the characters and then uh, all the magic system will come through I guess but yes there there aren't as much magic in this one if you're going into it to for it, for a big magic system, it's not. There's more history in this, and there's more about like um, relationships and those kind of things. Uh, but it is very fast paced. Like the, the, it reads really fast, so y you will not be stuck in. Like it's not like Lord of the Rings when you're stuck with one character for a certain amount of time. So it is, it's it's very good and yeah that concludes all of my 10 books of this year and let me know down below if you have finished your reading and if you have a, a book that you want to recommend or have you read any of these books that i mentioned and did you like them did you not like them and yeah, thank you for watching. If you like this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my content, please uh, press the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.